Welcome back to the Director's Garage. I am your host and resident idiot, Michael. Glad you could join us today. Happy to see your faces. We are talking, at long last, Verite. The Z-M-F Verite. And it's five, count them, five, like Diana Ross, pad Verite flight. I spent a lot of time with these and I am excited to break all of these down for you today. And what I can t what I want to talk about first is what a pain this process was. Ew. And because and and it's because of this. It's because these pads just slip on. Have you ever changed a bicycle tire? You know how you go around the rim with the tire and you're trying to get that last little bit in? Yeah, that's these headphones. <laughs> Because you get the first part started, and you think you got it, oh, and then it pops off. And then you get it, get, wait, I'm going to get it back in. And then, okay, so finally you're in, and then you, oh, there's one little bit. And then you're trying to get this in. And then it causes the other side to go. Arr. What I'm saying is, it ain't the easiest process. Now, that in and of itself is not a big deal. But when you're trying to do an A-B comparison between ear pads that sound relatively similar... It's, it's an issue. <laughs> this is reviewer's curse. But I did persist, and I got through all five of the headphone pads uh, that Zach was gracious enough to provide me with. Booyah! And I was able to draw some reasonable conclusions. As opposed to some unreasonable conclusions. The good part about these last three days is I listened to a lot of music, and I listened to it on some pretty high-end stuff. I spent one night just listening to record albums. I pulled a whole bunch of records that I know sound really good. I pulled out, like, Abraxas by Santana, which is this Mobile Fidelity 45 RPM record that's like a one step off the lacquer, whatever, dealio. And so it's really close to the master. It's a, it's a very clean record. So I, I mean, just pulled out stuff like that. And that's what I was using to demo and sort of play through these pads. And, and But at the same time, I was getting to enjoy a lot of good music through this really beautiful headphone. And then I shifted to a digital signal path where I was playing off of the computer. That signal path with the Hugo 2 that's that man that was an awesome awesome setup to the pads themselves this is sort of where things broke down for me so starting off the different materials that they're made out of all have different effects on the sound further the thickness of the pads because they're different thicknesses also affect the sound in certain ways so you're getting different sonic qualities out of head pads some of which are designed identical like for instance the be2 and the be2 suede are the same exact pad except one of the pads happens to be lambskin whereas the other pad is suede these pads with the suede seem to siphon off just a tiny bit of detail and on a harsh recording or something that may be desired the other difference is the thickness. These are thicker pads. These are thinner pads. The thicker pad pushes the headphone further away or closer into your head, which changes the orientation and distance between your eardrum and the speaker. This has profound effects on the sound, as you might imagine, because you're changing the point at which you're catching the wave in your ear. The thicker pads had better sound stage, but the thinner pads had better bass and better detail retrieval. Most of the things that I really care about were, get, were coming in with the thinner pads, and they were lacking in the thicker pads, which is the first pad that I, this is the first pad that I tried when you got this reaction. Ouch. I'm going to gravitate then towards thinner pads which are these three. So what are these three? These are BE2 suede, these are BE2 lambskin, and these are the, called the Verite. For comfort, the suede see, is the most comfortable. But with, with any time you put suede on, the suede feels better. But for overall comfort, I actually like the Verite pad. These seem like they actually came in too close. When I've compared the sound between the BE2 lambskin 
and the Verite pads, I preferred the lambskin. The lambskin seemed to focus the image a little bit better. I got a little bit better detail. They weren't quite as harsh. These, these sounded a little bit brighter to me. But now I'm going to spoil this party. Aww. Because this all drives me a little nuts. <laughs> You're always giving up something. Like, oh, I want a wide soundstage. I'm going to go thick pads. But wait, I want more detail, so I'm going to go with the lambskin pads. But wait, I want, a, I want a little more bass, so I'm going to go with the thin pads. But these aren't. So you're always giving something up to get something else. And that is maddening to me and the way I think of things. And it makes me sort of wonder, what are these headphones actually supposed to sound like? because they have, they're a chameleon. They're always changing depending on what pair of pads you put on them. So I think in the future, for my, for my own preferences, I'm not gonna buy something that has all of these options because as cool as these options are, I just wanna put the headphones on and listen to music and I don't wanna think about, well, do I wanna tweak the sound to sound a little like this or sound a little like that? I kinda of just want a fun headphone that's got, a, that's got a lot of bass and some great detail and kinda of kicks my butt. Well, this is me, Dixie. And to get that, I kinda of gotta meld all these into different things to make the one headphone that's gonna kick my butt. So what I'm saying is, I wanna to listen to these headphones more and I think that they still need break in I need to give this the chance to break in because it hasn't been like a hundred hours hundred and now I'm gonna go on my own little personal rant I don't understand why headphone manufacturers send out a headphone that needs to be broken in if you're set if I'm spending three thousand dollars or two thousand dollars on a product when it gets here I need to be able to put it on and listen and it should sound as good as it's gonna sound thank you I shouldn't have to listen to 100 hours of eh to get to something that's like oh that's really great if i'm spending this kind of money i want to put the headphones on and be impressed by the sound right out of the gate you gotta blow me away and pull me in early that's just me and i know some guys like the break break in process and they get to break it in their own way or whatever that's not me I, w I want to be wowed. I want to hear what it is I just spent my money on. Most of the time I just say wear the headphones and play music on them. They'll break in naturally, which they will, of course. Makes sense. But it annoys me that I have to sit through hours of blah to get to, oh wow, that's really great. So yes, I'm going to give these headphones an opportunity to do some break in. I think the safest thing to say is these are kind of on a short leash for me. If, if I can't get to a sound that I'm just thrilled with, this is a logical cut to make from the inventory. Uh -oh. As much as I waited for these and waited for months for these, I'm a little confused by them still. Well, it can sound a little more spacious. It can sound a little less detailed. It can sound a little more bass heavy. It can be a little more comfortable, or it can kind of have maybe the best sound without giving you the widest sound stage right here. See what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I don't know that this is my end game. I need like a baseline headphone, like the Focal Utopia sitting around. Here's a hint, I'm probably gonna buy a Focal Utopia now. Here, just take my money. Just take it, take it. So I've gone through an awful lot of head pads this week. A lot. It hasn't been the easiest job, but it's been a pleasurable job. It took me a long time just to figure out what each of these pads was doing. And even then, I'm not 100% sure I nailed it because you know, like you got a four minute gap between putting the things on and taking them off. So I made some generalizations and, and I seemed that seemed to be what it sounded like to me. And all I can do is tell you what it is that I'm hearing because, you know, you're not here. Meantime, we're going to be getting back to the unique melody Mest, I believe, and I'm still calling it the Mest. I want, to get, I want to get into some sound impressions with that. We're going to do a sound check, a formal sound check on that when I get a couple of days to listen just to that headphone. And then beyond that, we might do a shootout or two, or we'll get back to a, an update on where I'm at with the Verites. I kind of got to ask you to like and subscribe again. I, I'm sorry if that like bugs anybody. I just got to ask it because the subscriptions are going to be the key to this channel's future. I'm not a Patreon dude. I don't like, I don't want to sit there and have some weird crap on the side. You're not going to see any Director's Garage t-shirts anytime soon. 
<laughs> would anybody would anybody be interested? Boy, put that in the comments below, right? So subscribe to the biggest idiot on the internet, and um, I'll keep buying stuff and showing it off here. So that's it for this episode. We'll see you back soon, and we're gonna. Oh, that doesn't work at all. Oh,